Hi everyone, welcome to Not Defining. My name's Mark. Today, I'm going to be telling you how I deal with LGBT phobia. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't already subscribed, then please do. It really helps me out. And if you'd like some tailored support, then please write in the comments. I will reply to everyone. So please write a comment and I will get back to you. So today I'm going to be giving you some tips that I've learned about dealing with LGBT phobia in our families, in our societies, in our communities. Now, I'm not going to talk very much about overt homophobic abuse because if someone's shouting at you in the street or trying to attack you, that's just a safety issue. What I'm talking about is when people start to question these things and they say, oh, you know, it's political correctness gone mad. You know, now we have to use pronouns or, you know, well, I don't mind gay people, but I just don't want them getting married or adopting children because well, it's really you know, terrible. These kind of insidious LGBT phobic statements, which fundamentally undermine our right to exist as people in society. So when I first started out my life as a LGBT person, it was really difficult because I kept shooting down the logic of people's arguments and, and, and they just kind of carried on. And I, I didn't really understand like why this wasn't getting through that we have a right to exist. Here is how I have now started to approach these conversations. The first thing that I do is, this is not a conversation to be had, okay? So you don't need to discuss the fundamental validity of LGBT people's right to exist. You don't need to discuss trans rights. You don't need to discuss pronouns. You don't need to discuss the right to equal marriage. You don't need to discuss it. It's not a conversation because the minute you start to discuss it, it becomes a thing that's okay to be discussed. You wouldn't discuss heterosexual people's right to get married. You wouldn't discuss cisgender people's right to exist. You, of course you have a right to get married. Of course you have a right to exist. It's not a conversation. Okay, so when we are discussing it around the dinner table or in the pub or whatever, we're actually normalizing this idea that this is something to be questioned. So the first thing that I would always say is do not enter in. Just be like, you're mad. End of. Okay? If people do carry on though and you do want to engage or it's getting pretty bad, Here's what I will often do, okay? The fundamental logic of these people's arguments is ridiculous, okay? So all we have to really do is flip what they're saying background onto them. So, for example, somebody once said to me, oh, well, if we, if we allow same-sex marriage, then surely it's a slippery slope and people are going to start uh, marrying animals and we're going to have paedophiles marrying like young kids. How, where does it end? <laughs> and instead of going into the obvious answer, which is, well, it ends with consenting adults, I flipped it around and I said, okay, if heterosexual people are allowed to get married, where does that end? And they were so taken aback by the ridiculousness of my question that they said, sorry, I don't understand your question. And I said, right, so now you know how I felt when you asked me that question. Flip the question round and they see how ridiculous it is because of course they have no answer. Another example, uh, when it comes to pronouns and uh, uh, gender identity, there, there was a pretty hilarious example of when somebody had a bakery and they made 
what we normally call gingerbread men, but they'd called it gingerbread person, okay? There was nothing which specified it as a man, as there normally isn't uh, on a gingerbread man. Um, and so they were like, cute, I'm gonna put gingerbread person, fine. And these conservative people were so outraged by it, they were like, oh, it's political correctness gone mad, you know, millennials and Gen Z are just so sensitive about these things. It's freedom of speech. We can't say anything now. Gingerbread men have to be gingerbread people. Like it's clearly a man, like society is going crazy. Uh, and so the temptation is to enter into that argument and be like, no, this is wrong. Like we should be able to have gingerbread people because it's really important that like kids grow up and that. No, don't do that. Just leave their statement for how ridiculous it is. Just let it sit. Just be like, okay, well, um, you know, it's obviously important to you that this gingerbread man has a penis and clearly, you know, he does have a penis, so it's wrong for me to call him a person. Or you can say, well, wow, you know, I just baked a cookie, like, uh, um, I didn't know that you were so sensitive about gender, right? And so what you're doing is you're actually illuminating the fact that they, which is almost always the case, they are doing exactly the thing that they are accusing you of doing. Another example is, you know, when people say, oh, you know, gay people should be allowed to get married and same sex couples shouldn't, you know, men shouldn't kiss men and like, you know, women shouldn't have sex with other women and everything. And it's like, wow, that's embarrassing. Why do you care so much? Why do you care so much about the sex lives of other people? Why do you care? who I have sex with. Why are you thinking about that? Why do you care about people's genitalia? Why, why are you, th wh that's someone else. Why, why does that matter to you? Why does it matter to you? And they cannot answer that question because nine times out of 10, they haven't thought about it. They haven't thought about how screwed up homophobic heteronormative society is that we actually try and police how other people express love, what other people do in their bedrooms. They haven't thought about it. And so if you put that question on them, you will illuminate the lunacy of their thought process. Anyway, thank you so much. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know, do you have any other tips? Do you have any other advice? What do you think of this approach? Do you agree, do you not? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and please hit subscribe if you haven't already. I will look forward to speaking with you again soon. Bye for now.